Hello everyone and welcome to this series questions and answers based on the computational finance course. Today we have question number 14 based on lecture number 6 and lecture number 7. The question is as follows. Is the Heston model of time-dependent parameters affine? Um, the first thing we have to start with is that what is the purpose of making models with time-dependent parameters? Original Heston model had constant parameters, so what would be the added value of making them uh, time dependent. In a Heston model, we have uh, five parameters. Uh, this means that we have only five degrees of freedom to calibrate to the implied volatility surface. Uh, by making those parameters time dependent, this will expand our scope or our space of possibilities such that we may get much better calibrated calibration to the market quotes. Uh, of course, by having uh, more parameters or parameters that are time dependent, we may also uh, make our model much more complex in terms of calibration. But this is not the question at this point. At this point is what is the cost? If we make, if we consider Heston model of time dependent parameters, does the model uh, stay uh, affine? And are we able to find the corresponding currency function? And can we do it still? We can benefit with the fast uh, benefit from fast evaluations using fast Fourier transformation of Fourier-based methods. So let us start with the definition, of course, uh, of the aff affine models. So if we have a system of differential equations, stochastic differential equations, then affinity means that we have linearity in state variables. So if xt is a vector of uh, stochastic processes, then we have some linearity conditions. As you can see here in the drift, we would we would need to have some kind of constant, constant times vector of uh, uh, state variables. Uh, the difficult part is always the, the covariance because we are not only looking at the volatility, volatility term, but we have to look at the square. So it's the instantaneous covariance matrix. So we always take square of the volatility and then the affinity condition, the linearity condition has to hold. And this is typically the most challenging uh, part of when checking the, um, the affinity conditions. And then also um, the same has to hold for interest rates. Um, once we have the um, once the affinity condition is satisfied, we are able to find the corresponding characteristic function. So the details for that I will uh, refer to lecture number six and seven with some terminal condition. And uh, we also will know this is a result based on Duffy, Pan, and Singleton that the currency function is given of the following form: that the currency function is exponential function uh, of some functions a and b, and the a and b functions are the solutions to the corresponding to the two um, two um, two dimensional actually this is, could be depending on the uh, size of the vector but a ricati type of ODEs. so we always have a, a constant term and then number of b's will correspond to the dimension of our state vector of our vector x so if we have x consisting of uh, uh, five dimensions then this b will also be five dimensional and then we also have this uh, term a so this is uh, the, the the whole story of affine models affinity has to be satisfied once it's satisfied we are able to find the custody function and the custody function is given uh, the functions a and b are given in terms of the ricati type of equations that we need to solve and of course the question would be here uh, whether we are able to solve this a set of equations if parameters are uh, time dependent and of course the first question is is the model still affine if we have time dependent parameters so the Heston model um, this is something that we have already seen uh, multiple times in this course uh, consists of uh, two, two um, dimensions so we have a stock dimension and we also have a process for the variance we have a square root here so this is the volatility this is the variance process and you can see that here we are talking about the uh, squares, like we already uh, for the affinity. So then uh, if we square square root of Vt, then this term becomes a function of Vt. So this is indeed Heston is linear uh, uh, in state variables because we have only two state variables S and uh, and V. Of course, uh, we should not forget that in order to have Heston model, the Cassie function, we should first perform log transformation because this, as, you know, as it stands here, this is not affine because it's a product of square root of Vt and ST. So this form is not affine. However, if we perform log transformation, so this means we define process Xt 
which is equal to log st, then um, this model, the under log space, uh, the Heston model is affine. And here there is a little, some little, a little bit of an um, explanation of the, uh, the parameters, what they are. Um, this is, however, not relevant at this point. So if we look at the, um, the definition of the Heston model and we check the affinity, uh, so if we have non-lock transform, so we just take the Heston model as it stands, we can see the covariance matrix. It is not affine because we will have a, a V times S squared. So this term squared, it will be V times S squared. And of course, uh, the other term here the, on, the, on the other side of this diagonal will be gamma squared VT. So this is fine. And then cross terms involves product of the two variables. So obviously this is not linear in terms in terms of a, a state variables if we perform the log transformation uh, and we do exactly the same exercise this is the covariance matrix we see that we see some squares however but those squares are of uh, of products uh, of constant parameters so this doesn't really matter we always look at the vector of uh, state variables here the state variable is a vector consisting of the stock of log stock and also the variance process VT. So we see here, it's only VT here, VT, VT, VT. So everything is linear in terms of state variables. So of course, Heston model is uh, affine. Now, if you look at the time dependent, what happens? Then if we have uh, parameters that are time dependent, we will have a gamma that is time dependent, correlation time dependent, and so on. So again, we see there's much more complex um, expression here that we have. However, uh, we still are affine because the deterministic part doesn't really matter for affinity. We always focus on the state variables because uh, this is how the affinity is defined. Affinity is defined in terms of oh, we count, we, we check the affinity condition based on uh, state variables. And of course, parameters are not state variables. Those are just parameters. So they can be indeed time dependent. If we make them uh, stochastic, that means that our state variables also will change. And then indeed that will not be uh, satisfied. The affinity conditions will not be satisfied. However, here, obviously everything is everything is uh, linear in terms of VT because this is our state variable. And the other parameters are just time dependent. And of course, the question is where is the difficulty? Where is the problem with time dependent parameters? And it actually comes back once we are looking to solve the corresponding Riccati type of equations, the corresponding characteristic function. So if we make those time parameters to be stuck, uh, time dependent, and then we need to solve uh, ODEs. We need to solve uh, expressions. So I have uh, presented here in, a, uh, in the integral form, but we have those here, those ODEs. So we can actually integrate those. And then if we have time dependent parameters, we don't know uh, in generic form of uh, time dependent parameters, we don't know those solutions analytically. This means that for every argument u, so if we have characteristic function with many, many arguments u, for each of them, we will need to perform time integration, integration with respect to time. And that can be extremely expensive. This means that in a generic case, if we just make uh, parameters time dependent, the model is still affine, that's fine. However, there will be a substantial cost if we move, if we want to find the characteristic function, because the characteristic function will be, uh, to for every argument of characteristic function, we will need to perform integral. And that's typically computationally very expensive. On the other hand, uh, if we consider piecewise constant parameters, so not time dependent, let's say in generic case, uh, in a just continuum, but we define them as a piecewise constant on some intervals, then actually we are still able to find the corresponding KST function. This KST function will be derived in some kind of analytic form, but however, it will be uh, recursive. So we have to perform some iteration uh, uh, the, then we will have, if we have, let's say, five intervals for time dependent parameters, we will have five characteristic functions that will depend on each other. Uh, the details for that I have provided in the course, but also in the, in the corresponding book. But in essence, just keep in mind that if we make time dependent parameters that are piecewise constant, that's still relatively easy. However, if we make them just time dependent without any constraints, that's becoming very uh, computationally expensive and often. Uh, 
it is so slow that you cannot apply this model further in calibration. So uh, you want to make model much more flexible, you will make it flexible. However, you will destroy the computational efforts, computational speed of your fast Fourier transformation, because this will be extremely, extremely expensive. I hope it explains. See you next time.